Hello, Asabi. This is Grim from the Reality Skewed Gamers, and you are listening to the Escape Pod cast. Portions of this show have been recorded in front of a live studio audience. Kick back and enjoy the ride. One is a Grand Arena specialist from the UK. The other is a Territory Battle Tactician from the US. Together, there are no signs of intelligent life on board. With both having played this game since launch, the one thing we are sure of is that you will be entertained. The Escape Pod Cast, a service of the Escape Pod Castaways. A weekly podcast about the mobile game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Live from the network studios of Yavin 4, here are your hosts, Neil Andrew Eyre and Paul Anthony. Coming up on this week's edition of the Escape Pod, Cast. I got Mara Jade. Yes, Neil, we know. Mara Jade came out this week and Star Killer's kit was released as well. No, no, Paul, you don't understand. I got Mara Jade. We all did, Neil. She is a marquee character. Paul, why do you think I'm so excited? Because Mara Jade is in the game. We knew this was going to happen with the leak. I do not understand why you're, why you're, you know, continuing to mention this. Because I spent crystals on her. I simped on her, didn't I? So, uh, well, I didn't simp on her, but I spent crystals too, Neil. Water is wet. Sky is blue. Do we need to state the obvious in the open? Let me put it this way. I don't have to farm her. Yeah, that's because you don't spend money, Neil. You're free to play. We know this every single week. Yeah, Paul, but I pulled a 330 shard pack. Oh, well, oh, I I think we're never going to hear the end of that one now, are we? Nope, nope, nope. You're never going to hear the end of it. Well, we will be talking about what you can now do with her and also with Starkiller. Then I am sure we will also discuss Conquest and the arena transitions as well. Of course, because we have to talk about those things. In our incoming transmission, you brought us another tactic advantage person. That's right. Trevor Boy Gaming will join us this week to remind people about the Toys for Tots drive that they're doing. And also clarify some of what Ringer said last week about their GAC brackets they do on their server. Then it should be ready in time this time around when we go live. The finale of Helly and the Noob is scheduled to air this week. With Patreon's choice on the bridge, all this and breaking news as and if it happens. Right here on the Escape Pod. Cast. The Escape Pod Cast News. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Escape Pod Cast. I'm your host, Nev, and as always, I'm joined by my hetero life partner, Paul. Paul, how was your week? Uh, it wasn't as good as mine, but still, how was your week? Yeah, I, I definitely can't uh, say that I uh, I had as good of a week as you, but I've been actually having a pretty good week overall, professionally, loving what I do, um, and, you know, it, it used to be where things were crazy, crazy, crazy um, at work, and it was more TGIF than normal, but right now... I am excited. I'm happy where I'm at, and I'm excited to be able to do a live show with you in December. You know, we were off, quote unquote, from a live show. We pre-recorded last week, but I'm absolutely grateful to do a live show with you, especially after you pulled 330 shards yes! on your free-to-play account. First time I have ever done that on my main account. Crystals are like fucking all shit to me. So I don't <laughs> waste them on anything like that whatsoever. I don't even buy them from the shipment store. All my crystals go into refreshes and mod farming. But, you know, when that leak dropped, when that leak dropped <laughs> and I knew, you know, EA, you know, EA Apple, whoever was responsible for the leak. And I knew that Mara Drade was dropping, I figured to myself, she'll be the fourth character. That is going to give me three weeks to save up as many crystals as possible. I saved up 10,900 crystals to simp for Mara Jade. And when she dropped, and oh, oh, oh. if 
five seven five seven three thirty. Oh my god, there it is. <laughs> and everything behind you took <laughs> took the yeah, brunt of I, it. I mean, I just I, I literally just finished setting up the studio, putting everything on my shelves, getting everything <laughs> all nicely stood up, and I just I I I just yeah, I leapt from my chair. It was like, oh my god, oh my god, I've just I've I've heard of people pulling 330s before, but, you know, to pull a 330, like, for the first time ever, going, doing doing it for the first time ever, just going through pulls and seeing Swevens and seeing Ranger do Swevens over and over and over again. Because I watched his stream where he was just getting fives and sevens all the way, and I'm like, you know. I, I, it, but Loki it, it, pulled a 230. Yeah, Lo Loki pulled a 230 as well. So, um, but yeah. To, just to, to, to so i hit uh, you know i'm just about to hit four i'm like oh well at least i'm gonna get four stars and then boom <laughs> it just hit and i was like wow would that you feeling... have pulled you had two left uh, i i would no i would have had i still had four thousand crystals left yeah so you still had two pulls left maybe I a still, third yeah uh, would you still have? Would you have continued? I, 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 to I, have I would have. I would. I would have continued until I was at zero. But and here's the. It's a very, very important. But it's a very, very important. But didn't need the Kairos. I had five hundred sevens and five hundred nines saved up, so I knew I wasn't going to need Kairos. But I kind of felt like I might have needed a couple of things here and there um, it, to, to go beyond. Um, I knew if I wasn't going to get her to seven stars, that I was probably only going to be at a gear to take her to gear eleven. So I had 4,000 crystals left. So, um, uh, and Dr. Feelgood was there when the, when the internet came back, I, I went live again. I took it to, uh, I took it to 11. I needed, um, one piece of gear to take her from 11 to 12. And then I needed one piece of gear to take her from 12 to 13. And I had just enough crystals to buy those two pieces of gear. So it was, it was the RNG gods going, we know that you haven't got all of the gear that you need to relic Mara Jade straight away. So we're going to give you the 330 early so that you can use your remaining crystals to sim. And that's what I did. My, my crystal, my crystal hoard went from 10,900 to 200. Just taking Mara Jade to relic five. But, um, and oh, so you, took, my... oh you took her to five all the yeah, way. Yeah. I took her to five. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 Dr. Feelgood was on stream with me at the time because I got her to five and I could have took her to seven. I had the resources to take her to seven, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking she's the hand of the emperor. She's the emperor's hand. So in order for her to be good, Palpatine also needs to be good. And my Palpatine was like gear 12. So I thought, you know what? I'll save these relics. That's what I did. So I... I, I quickly took Palpatine to 13 and then I dumped all of my, I was only able to take Palpatine to Relic 4, um, but I took Palpatine to Relic 4. So now I've got Palpatine, Vader and the Emperor's Hand all at Relics and oh my God, are who they else, good. Who else are you using? And also how have you finally modded your Mara Jade? Oh, Mar she's all, all offense. I've gone for, I've gone for, uh, I've gone for offense. Like okay. Heavy. Yeah, I've gone for full on offense. I uh, if if I hadn't if I didn't have her maxed out on stars, uh, I probably would have. If all I had her was at gear eleven, I would have gone speed. It's a bit like um, gas. While you're waiting for your gas to hit seven stars, you go as much protection as possible. You do. You just go full. You know. You go full protection. You want to make him as survivable as possible. So I would go speed as much as possible so that you can get her abilities because her, her AOEs, uh, her, her, her main special has got that AOE that just puts loads of debuffs and stagger on, which is awesome because then, yeah. But uh, I've got her just under 300 with full, uh, full offense and um, a health set mod. I was going to go crit chance, but I figured... Um, uh, I, I figured I'll. Um, I had two health mods that were faster than any of my crit chance, so that's do, what I with. Do you have the Nom Nom Nomicron on Mara? No, 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 I don't because it's not a GAC. Nom uh, I'd, I'd already decided that my Omicron was going to go on Zam. Okay. 
Um, so could, because I have, this is my main account and I have an alt, what I've done, I've put the Omicron on Qui-Gon Jinn on my alt and I'm putting the Omicron on Zam on my main. I, I want to see what they're both like. I, I want to get a feel for the GAC Omicrons on both my accounts. Because, because you're the GAC guy. Because I'm the GAC guy. <laughs> um, the, I, I, all of my all of my Omicrons, my Omicrons are only ever going to go on um, um, GAC Omicrons. They, they, that's what they'll do. They, they will only ever go on um, gotcha. characters uh, for GAC. But uh, I've been, I've been test. Oh God, I tested her in um, Conquest. Oh, well, oh let, let's God. let's talk about the kit, and then and okay. then you can tell us about your experience with the kit because yeah, you know, kit reveals on other channels are wonderful, but they dive right in and talk about you know, oh, I'm doing this with this and this and this, mm. and people are like, okay, but what can she do? Well, yeah. that's what we want to give to you. Her basic calculated shot deals special damage to target enemy twice and inflicts days. If Palp is the leader and it is Mara Jade's turn, otherwise, uh, okay, so the days is if Palp is the leader. Otherwise, a random ally with useful pawn assists dealing 50% less damage. Yeah, that is ridiculously... That's really, really useful. I've used that. That's useful against the Rebel teams. That's really, really useful. So um, you fire that off. You, you, you know, you, you use her basic um, against uh, Chewie, basically. Okay. Um, um, so, but that, that is, that, that, that put, that days on the basic is really, really useful against uh, CLS Rebels. Because you, as soon as her basic becomes available, but you you just hit Chewy, so that you're not getting the you know so that uh, Han doesn't get the assist from Chewy and the the second have character you, and have you get faced three PO as well? Yes, yeah, and it still works well for you. Well, I mean, it still yeah, it still works well on it. Uh, it's worked well for me, and and you got to remember that these these CLS teams that they're all relic teams because the the only way I've been able to really test her is in um conquest okay did you pull all your mod your um not mods but uh data cards data cards did you pull all of them off to see how it is no no it, it was just it was making it was just seeing how the kit works so with our basic landing the landing the days okay um, it was just landing the days. I, I, when it comes to her basic and landing that days, I've tried against multiple different teams, and it's like, who do I not want assisting? And that's who you aim for with that basic. All right. Special one is called Ultimate Predator with a four turn cooldown. Dispel all buffs and inflict stun and vulnerable on a target enemy for one turn. Then deal special damage to all enemies and inflict tenacity down for one turn, and it deals double damage to shocked enemies in Jedi. So, Palpatine shock. Yeah. Um, yeah. The thing is, my, my Mara is faster than Palpatine, so um, I don't see the benefit of the, the, the special damage on shocked because <laughs> she goes before Palpatine. I have seen it afterwards. It absolutely wrecks Jedi teams. It has this, it just destroys Jedi teams, not just Jedi teams, Padme teams. It destroys the Jedi on Padme teams. It, it just wrecks them. Um, and the beauty is um, because with Padme teams, GK's there, you, you're kind of forced to go for him. It's like, I would go for him anyway because he's got the, t it's like, okay, I, I just, you know, I want to stun him. I want to I want to get rid of the taunt and I want to stun him. So it's great against Padme teams because it just destroys all of the Jedi and it's absolutely great against um, just random Jedi led teams. The, the, yeah, I faced a GK team that had uh, um, Ayala, um, Cam, um, no. GK was the lead, uh, a GMY, and so it just it just wrecks them. It so if if they're them. shocked and they're Jedi. Is it quadruple damage? I don't... It's very difficult to tell on the damage because I've been testing 
in um, Conquest. Gotcha. And I've I've got um, I've got the bit I've got the big four data cards. Even uh, even though I haven't even got to the end of two, I've got the big four. So I've got Amplified Agony. But are uh, what color are they? Um, I've got three greens and one blue. Perseverance is in blue. Amplified Agony is in green. Caustic Emissions is in green. And um, what's the other one? That three dot one that puts the the DOTs on and speeds them up. I forgot what it's called. It's got two two names in it. I forget what it's called, but I, uh, I've I'm sure those. somebody will say it. Otherwise, I'll look yeah. in the break. So because I've got those four, there's already a lot of dots on them. So, um, but it, it it still absolutely destroys. It really, really does. It absolutely destroys them. And once Palpatine does actually have a go and he puts shock on them all, because the thing you got to remember is with her AOE, it puts tenacity down. Right. So if she does go first, it helps the shock to land because they're tenacity. That's down. very true. So if your Mara is faster than your Palpatine, it, it benefits you because um, he, you know, Palpatine's AOE puts the shock on, uh, puts the shock on the team. And then with, um, with Mara's second special, depending on which special you use first, her first special or her second special, um, everything that she throws is going to land. It's gotcha. just, every, it just all lands. All right. Let's, um, let's move yeah. on to her second special infiltrate and disrupt oh, another four tool four turn cooldown. Deals special damage, AOE, and inflicts offense down, shocks, and staggers for two turns. Mara, mm -hmm. Jane, Mara Jade gains stealth for two turns. And 1.25% turn meter for each debuff inflicted by this ability. So you've got offense down, shock, and stagger. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. let's just say it's the first turn... That's over five characters. So five times 4.25 or four points. No, 3.75. 15, 18. That's like 18, 19% uh, turn meter. I can't do math that quick. I apologize. Yeah. If Palpatine is leader, he also gains that much turn meter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a monster. What I've I've tried this. I've tried a couple of different teams on this because of the stagger for two turns. Um, uh, I I wasn't I, I wasn't getting um, the AOE on Palpatine and Vader refreshed enough times to take full advantage of that stagger. So what I did on a couple of occasions was I swapped Thrawn out and put Tie Fighter Pilot in. Because obviously he still gets the turn meter train being uh, Empire. Because obviously he's got an AOE, um, so you don't waste his AOE with his first go. You save his AOE for after Mara J throws the uh, uh, the stagger out, so that you've always got someone from that's on your team that has an AOE capability. With so if 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 Vader's AOE hasn't cooled down or Palpatine's AOE hasn't cooled down. You've got TIE Fighter Pilot there waiting in the wings to hit the entire squad with the AOE. They're all staggered. Boom, turn meter, gone. Just gone. Back to zero. It's beautiful. It's absolute. Oh, God, she is just an absolute monster. <laughs> I cannot wait. People keep telling me that she beats. I, 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 I'm waiting for a gas team to come up. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm desperately waiting for this gas team to come up. Um, so that I can, so that I can try that. But um, well, she uh, also yeah. works really well against Night Sisters. Mm, yeah, I have been, even I at lower to... star. Yeah. So uh, I, right. I, 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 my, my, I, my primary testing uh, with the team has been Rebels and Rebels Jedi and Galactic Republic because of the um, because of the way things uh, because of the way the mechanics work in in Conquest. Um, that's just what I've been. That, that's only what I've been able to test so far. I'm hoping to, you know, really, really push the limits, though, and, and, and see how far I can take it. Well, let's, uh, let's also now talk about the Emperor's Hand for Unique. Mm. It does have an Omicron. If Emperor Palpatine is in the leader slot at the start of the encounter, Emperor, Empire and Sith allies get plus 20% potency. By the way, her... Um, 
her categories are attacker, empire, and ufu. She's a dark side ufu. Mm -hmm. For those who are wondering what the hell that is, unaligned force user. It's much simpler to just ufu it. Uh, Empire and assist allies gain plus 20% offense and potency. Otherwise, all other dark side allies gain useful pawn until the end of the encounter, which can't be copied or dispelled. Mara Jade then has an additional 10% critical chance, critical damage, and offense for each ally with useful pawn. So if it's not a uh, dark side empire or a dark side empire team and it's not um oh and also sith note sith she's i want to see what you are going to do neil maybe putting her with outside of an empire team because useful I, yeah. pawn Oh yeah, no, no. I, I fully intend to 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 test her with um uh, with some other. It's just you got to remember. I only just got her yesterday. Right. Right. I literally. I only well, everybody just got, got her, her yesterday. Maybe yeah, not like I, you, but <laughs> I, I only just got her yesterday, and it, you know, I'm I'm you know I, I'm not I'm not the uh, you know I, I don't have the money that the Empire's gaming division has. It's not like I can just throw crystals here willy nilly in Squad Arena and just. Oh, I'll try that team. I'll try that team. I'll try that team. You know, I do not have. Well, that's where the, the new sandbox fund. mode is. Exactly. I do not have the funding. Of, you know, I don't have the funding of the Empire's gaming division. You know, I'm free to play. Um, <laughs> but I will be. Uh, I, I've I've tested her with. Uh, I've tested her with Basti. Um, um I test because I've been testing the trio of Palpatine, Vader, and Mara. And I have been swapping, you know, the other uh, the other two, uh, either Empire or Sith uh, around. Um, it works very, very well with uh, it does work very, very well with Malik yeah. because he just tanks like an absolute truck, uh, which is great. Uh, does work very, very well with um, works very, very well with Basti because of the shock. Because, she, because Basti's also Sith. Because N uh, nasty because Basti. Basti. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, she also, at the start of Mara Jade and Emperor Palpatine's turns, they gain, uh, Mara Jade gains stack of loyal hand, mm -hmm. which is plus 10% max protection and offense. Anybody who gets inflicted with useful pawn is a negative five critical, negative 5% critical chance damage and negative 5% offense. Now, if you put the Nom Nom Nomicron in, at the start of battle, if the enemy leader is not a galactic legend, they lose 100% protection, 50% max protection, and Mara Jade instantly gains 100% turn meter. And whenever an enemy unit is defeated, all allies gain 20% max protection, Mara Jade inflicts vulnerable on a random enemy, which can't be evaded or resisted. This is a territory war one. So it's not a galactic legend killer, but this certainly, as you already said, is going to take down CLS walls. Mm -hmm. Oh, this yeah. It's going to take down Padme walls with Jedi, heavy Jedi mm. presence. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and let's be honest. I mean, mo mo most Padme teams, it's Padme and then four Jedi. That, that, that's just the way it is, you know. Some 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 of the more higher end uh, players uh, have maybe got some uh, clone troopers thrown in there because they've got Jedi with um, GK. Um, uh, but yeah, this is oh god, yeah, just ooh. I'm very 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 interested to see what this uh, what Mara uh, what what Mara does to Padme with the Commander Tano in it. <laughs> well. Commander Tano would not gain useful pawn. Commander Tano is not dark side. So No, I'm just thinking I'm just thinking in terms of getting wrecked. You know Oh, hitting Commander I, Tano. Yeah, I'm just thinking Well, in terms she's not of, a Jedi. Doesn't you see here's the thing uh, that that people that have her will uh, you know will go Padme, Commander Tano, 
the ones, a lot of the teams that I've seen, and then they'll go with three weaker Galactic Republic because it's got Commander Tarno in it. So you know, we'll, yeah. we'll just have to wait and see. Speaking um, of command, uh, speaking it. of Commander Tano, I unlocked and have, and I'm the finisher, the G13 finisher away from having Commander Tano. And also, since we last talked live, I also finally do have my Jedi Master Kenobi. Oh, nice one! So, Bravo. Yes. So overall, I mean, we've just covered the kit. I know you're, you know, simping ain't easy for you. No, it's but not. But do you, is she a powerful character or is she a game changer? Or does she, as, as I said, is she just simply a powerful character that can take out those, those squads? Oh, it's game changing as far as GAC is concerned in Territory War. It is game changing as far as PvP is concerned, definitely. Um, because there are teams that Palpatine, Vader, Empire teams that, that there are there are teams that that just would not counter. With Mara in, all of a sudden they counter. You know, they just do. Um, to to be able to counter a CLS team with ease, this is not going to lose a lot of banners. Seriously, this is not going to lose a lot of banners. It's going to lose maybe two or three banners max because you are going to get hit first. Han is always going to shoot first. He's always, always going to shoot first. Um, but to and be there's able no to... healing on on that type of team. No, no, there's there's no there's no the there's no real um, there's no real healing on it. I mean, you can there's you, there's you, no you... banner recovering healing because there's no. a equalize, but yeah, that makes equalize. everybody. Go down. <laughs> yeah, there's there's not going to be there's there's no um there's no major uh, uh, empire healer that you can throw onto that team. So um, uh, from a banner healing point of view, no. But you're you're going to be able to take out a CLS team with this or a gas team with this. Where at before that you you weren't doing that. You were not doing that with a standard empire team. With Mara in, it, it turns it from a standard Empire team into, um, you know, an A-team counter. Um, and, that, you know, I, I haven't done it myself, but I have been told if you throw what Tambor and Trey are in there, it will take out a JMK. So it is, she, she does make an Empire team with a couple of extra, you know, cheeses in there, um, a, G, a, a GL killer. So... She's not game change. Well, here's the thing: it, it the, the the squad arena is gone. So, game changing used to mean something that could make you climb in squad arena. Squad, mm -hmm. sorry, squad, squad arena. Hello, <laughs> squad arena. Bueller, 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 <laughs> Bueller squad arena, squad. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. It's all about GAC, and she has got what is necessary to make the empire great again like really really good it, it takes it takes your empire team from a b team to an a team this is definitely not something you're putting on defense this is raw offensive power to take out teams that are just problematic you yeah sure you can still take your cls in against a gas if you want but CLS has got so many more other teams that you can take out. So why not have this, you know, oh, 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 hello, Gas. Meet Mara Jade. Well, also, not only does she, uh, you know, apparently take care of Mara Jade, it needs to be known, and it's something I didn't read in the Unique because I wanted to kind of talk about this as we threw to the break, but if... Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker is on the enemy squad. Mara Jade blinds Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker for a turn at the start of her of her turn. Yeah, I I thought that was a nice touch. That I thought that was a nice touch. I mean, if she could have scarred up his face, that would have been even more. That would have <laughs> that would have that, that would have been like yeah, just 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 a graphic, you know, just just alter the graphics just a little, just to mess up his face so that people would be like. 
why does it do that? And I'd be like, go and read the Thrawn trilogy, then you'll understand why. <laughs> go read a book. Go All read right. a book. All right, we're going to take a quick break. No, uh, no Patreon leaderboard, because we currently don't have GAC going on right now. So it's going to be a quick break, and we'll be right back after these messages right here on the Escape Pod cast. Hotbot in Hot Utils is one of the most comprehensive tools for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. With integration into the super useful mod tool Grand Ivory, Hot Utils can help you tackle some of the most difficult aspects of the game. Not sure how to mod your roster for a certain game mode? Use one of the many filters that automatically assigns the right mods to the right character in accordance with your guild needs. Now with the digital features that can assist you and your guild officers in territory battles and territory wars, Hot Utils is an amazing value. And don't forget the useful tools for yourself in Grand Arena, like the in-depth and customizable compare feature. Got multiple accounts like Neil, but not the time to remod them all? With this one-stop utility, you can switch between your alts and never miss a mod upgrade or a mod switch before locking into GAC or Territory Wars. Starting at just $5 a month, you don't want to miss out on these great tools. Hot Utils is the new official remodding service for the Escape Pod. Cast. Visit HotUtils.com to learn more. That's H-O-T-U-T-I-L-S dot com. And go ahead and spice up your Galaxy of Heroes experience. Followers, be sure to support the shows brought to you on the Escape Podcast Twitch and YouTube channel by becoming a Patreon. For as little as $2 a month, you can support us and get a little extra for yourself. With tiered rewards, including access to Shitty Bill's Arena tracking box, after show access, inclusion in the GA Center leaderboards, behind the scenes access, and much more. There is something for everyone on our Discord server. Head on over to Patreon, that is P A T. R-E-O-N dot com slash the escape pod and sign up today. Thank you for supporting and listening to the escape podcast. We want you join the GAC chain gang today. This is the commander of the 506 procrastination battalion and the leader of the GAC chain gang. I am sending out a call to action for any Swago content creators on Twitch who would be willing to broadcast their GAC attack rounds alongside some of our best, including Mr. Jigabachi, Dr. Zeppers, Rico1982, and the Bounty Honeys. What is the Chain Gang, you ask? We are an amazing group of content creators who are dedicated on streaming the Grand Arena Championship attack rounds on Twitch. The idea is to provide continuous content back-to-back from one streamer to the next and allow the viewers to enjoy more Swago content, as well as enjoy the variety of streamers that are currently present in the group. If you are interested in joining the Chain Gang, please reach out to myself on Discord at AndyBees, hashtag 7465, or you can send us a message on our Twitter page at ChainGAC. Join us today. We have your back. The Escape Pod cast. And welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Paul, do you have a Relic 5 Mara Jade? No, but I... That must be me then. That must be me then. I'm going to say this. During the days um, when the droids were coming out for gas, Neil, I had... I pulled a 330 shard pack of B1. Mm -hmm. And B1 is good for more than just Grievous. Yeah. So that, that that wasn't the one where you automatically get a three thirty, the five thousand crystal pack. No, no, I, I, I simped for droids. Shinbi <laughs> of Yavin Four would be proud. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's been good. It's been good. I've just yeah, I'm I'm just yeah, I'm just having so much fun with that character. Uh, you know, she could have been crap, and I still would have done it. <laughs> Uh, I still well, would have done it. Let's let's talk about what all of this hubbubaloo with legacy characters is. Star Killer. He mm-hmm. is a dark side, unaligned force user, attacker. That means he's simply dark side. He's simply an attacker. And he's simply an unaligned force user. No Empire. 
strangely enough, even though they, you know, put him at, you know, pretty much copied his Darth Vader's apprentice outfit and attitude. But special or uh, basic deal physical damage to target enemy twice. If it's Starkiller's turn, inflict shock for one turn to target enemy and deal physical damage to all other enemies, which can't be countered. So if it's his turn, he deals damage twice and deals physical damage to all other enemies. So, okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, uh, um, I I'm not upset at that. And if he has unleashed, reduce special ability cooldowns by one. Special one, boundless force throw, cooldown of four. And it also has an Omicron. Deal physical damage to target enemy and inflict daze and vulnerable for two turns and gain 25 stacks of force energy. And if he's also unleashed, it inflicts buff immunity and healing immunity, which can't be resisted. That also seems pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. While in grand arenas, while he's unleashed, dispel all debuffs on all allies and... The buff immunity and healing immunity can't be copied, dispelled, or resisted. So, okay. not that's that's a good omicron. Give everybody something that uh, can't be dispelled. Yep. Special two force repulse. Dispel all buffs on target enemy and deal physical damage to all enemies, which can't be evaded. This attack deals 5% more damage for each buff dispelled. So, those... um, That sounds like a good Cotton Quest ability. Especially if you're using Volatile Accelerator, which was the thing we couldn't think of mm -hmm. uh, in the first segment. And all the damage over times. Um, even a Vader team with a uh, Vader lead, nonetheless. With the dots that keep coming back and coming back. Yeah. Uh, deal 25% more damage for each buff dispelled. So 30% more damage for each buff dispelled. If he's unleashed. And also, this is a second Omicron. Dispel all debuffs on all enemies. Or, I'm sorry, dispel all buffs on all enemies. So it, he simply continually dispels everything, is what I'm yeah. reading. Mm -hmm. Now, something called a granted ability. I'm guessing he gets this doesn't matter his level. Doesn't matter if you, you don't have to level this up, but it's limited to one use per battle. It's called Size Means Nothing, Neil. Hmm. Have you seen this one yet? No, I haven't seen or read or heard or nothing about Starkiller. He pulls a Star Destroyer out of the sky. Very, very clever. Okay, I get the homage to the games. I really do get the homage to the games, but... Um, if he's going to pull a Star Destroyer out of the sky, it should do more than deal damage to equal to 80% of the Star Killer's max health to all enemies and stun them for one turn, which can't be resisted. Well, it's no, 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 no. Come on. That it's yeah. Um, think think about the aerial bombardment from the TIE fighter pilot. You 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 think that that would do a little bit more damage than what that does, or or I Beers agree, is, or or Piet. So it, it's you know it's it's for visual effect and it's referencing um, his abilities from the Force Unleashed. 
yeah. um, and from uh, from his uh, from his law. That that's all it's there to do, you know. Well, okay, eighty percent of Star Killer's max health. So if you put a bunch of health on him, yeah, that's going to be crazy. It's all, a meme ability. It's a meme. It's a ability. meme ability. It's a meme ability. And also, in addition to this, a granted ability. Allies recover one one hundred percent health and protection. If this defeats an enemy, Star Killer takes a bonus turn. That's a <laughs> little overpowered, in my opinion. But the whole the whole animation time of this. It in the game, it took him a while to pull down a Star Destroyer. He it should have a cooldown, you know, use it, and he's vulnerable for a certain amount of time, and then it hits. Okay. That I don't like this ability. And it's not because I I think it was, as you said, it's a meme ability and does not reflect the true use of that ability. No. Anyway, he's got a uh, he's got a Zeta um, unique. He's got three Omicrons actually. Looking at this now, Star Killer has plus thirty percent counter chance, critical chance, defense penetration, defense defense penetration, and offense, and he's immune to fear. He gains four stacks of force energy <laughs> each time he deals damage to an enemy, increased to five on a critical hit. At 100 stacks, he loses all stacks of force energy and becomes unleashed until the end of battle. When he gains unleashed, he gains an additional 70% counter chance, so he will always counter. Critical chance, defense, defense penetration, and offense. So at 100%, he doubles his ability. Mm -hmm. He dispels all debuffs on himself when he becomes unleashed. He takes a bonus turn. His cooldowns are reset. And if there are no Galactic Legend allies, he gains the special ability signs, size means nothing. Okay. Now looking at it, the, you know, we, we read these kits for the first time unless somebody rolls 330. You know, uh, when we when we look at them on the show. So it's a granted ability that he gets when he becomes unleashed. It's not usable right at the beginning. No. There you go. See? It's not usable straight and away. It's not usable straight away. All right. I can get behind it. Force energy at 100%. Uh, we already know at 100 stacks he gets unleashed. He gains additional effects and can't gain force energy. Science, size means nothing. Um... And then deal damage to 80%. Oh, it, it's just once again saying size means nothing. Why they put it there twice, I'm not sure. All right. Once again, another Grand Arena Omicron for this guy, Neil. Mm -hmm. At the start of battle, if there's no galactic... This is the unique without the Omicron. If he doesn't have a Galactic Legend ally, and Starkiller has exactly one Jedi... One light side unaligned force user, one Sith, and one dark side unaligned force user ally. All allies gain the gain the following: 100% critical damage and max health, 35 speed, 100% maximum protection until Star Killer is defeated, and they're immune to daze and stun. Neil, let's look back at the characters that we received coming up to this. Yeah. We got Dash Rendar. We got, um, who's not a Jedi or any, he's nope. not a Force just user a or anything. Just a scoundrel. But, Kyle Katarn. Yeah. Isn't he an uh, unaligned Force user and Jedi? Yeah, I think so. One Sith, there's Talon. One Dark Side unaligned Force user ally, Mara Jade. Mara Jade. So, take out Dash Rendar, put in somebody else <laughs> that doesn't follow any of those, a scoundrel, and you've got yourself a team. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. have all of the, all of them. If you have together. all of those characters, yeah. All right. 
while in Grand Arena. Here, here's what you get if you have Star Killer in Grand Arena. And I know you're interested in this. If the conditions for this ability were met at the start, they also gain where Jedi tank allies taunt for a turn. All allies get an extra 35 speed. Debuffed enemies deal 50% less damage. Whenever a Sith ally uses a basic ability, Starkiller assists, dealing tw only 20% less damage. You normally see him deal 10% damage or, you know, which essentially would be 80% damage in this. They're dealing 80% damage. Mm -hmm. Whenever a dark side unaligned force user, Mara Jade, uses a special ability, all allies gain critical hit immunity for one turn. Whenever Starkiller uses a special ability, Kalkatarn, oh, Arsenal is, is uh, Kalkatarn is not on the line force user, just Jedi. Okay, so Visus Mar. Yeah. Uh, no, I think Visus Mar is a Jedi, though. No, I'm pretty sure she's an unaligned force user. Just on the line force user. Okay. Thank you very much, Arsenal. I appreciate it. Um, whenever Starkiller uses a special ability, light side healer allies have their cooldowns reduced by four. Four! Nice. And Jedi tank allies gain damage, immunity, and taunt. Could be this, a GL killer, this. The, it... Could be a GL killer. It really could. I'm really thinking so. We'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah, Ray Rock, thank you for unaligned uh, force user. Uh, Visa Smart is, is one. Perfect. So, let's Every, look everybody's, back. Everybody's going to be, put it this way, everyone, and I do mean everyone, is going to be watching Arnold when this event drops because he's got them all ready to rock and roll. Right. I think he's the only content creator that is going to have every character ready day one the second that that event drops the second it, it drops yes i think heinze also has gone nutso for these guys mm -hmm. so but heinze will be asleep when it gets released exactly heinze will be asleep when it gets released yeah yes uh cat is an unaligned force user a light side unaligned force user mm -hmm. that is yeah no true. one's taking cat off the g off the yeah. jmk team that's this that's not gonna happen yeah, so I was worried because of the the leak that talked about that Arena was going away, that Qui-Gon was getting an Omicron. I was worried that it was true that Starkiller was not much to write home about. I'm I'm letting my mom know that I like Starkiller, to mm. be honest with oh, you, yeah. Neil. It's a good kit. It is a it is definitely a potential GL killer. It absolutely is a potential GL killer. Not, not I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be doing JMK or Lord Vader, but I, I, I get the distinct feeling that this, that, that, that team is going to smash to pieces teams like, um, especially with the, um, the adding of the cooldowns, the force cooldowns on Ray teams and um, JM, uh, uh, JML teams and Slacker teams. Which we already know CG are okay with being beaten by other non GLs. They they just didn't want JMK and Lord Vader and and um, C to be beaten by um, non GL teams um, because obviously you know referencing the uh, the nerfs. But there are still off meta counters for those other three GLs. So it's kind of like, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Um, Hopefully there'll be still something left in Squad Arena for people to be able to test this Star Killer. You mean Sandbox Arena now? Yeah, Sandbox Arena. So yeah, let, let, let's talk about this um, while we still have a little bit of time before we go to the break and we get Trevor Boy in here for uh, talking about the charity event that's still going on. Are you? I'm relieved that Squad Arena is as gone as it is. And it's not because I'm vindictive about it. 
that I didn't like Squad Arena. I like the fact that the crystal income is more of a stipend. And thank you, Sir Boss, very much for uh, for stopping by. It's been it's been a while, and it's good to see you. Thank you for the subscription. Arenas aren't as crazy as they were. What has your what have you seen from your shard? You know, not not talking about shard chat, but just your arena shard itself. Nothing. No one's doing anything. It's it's. I I I haven't moved. I go in. <laughs> I start a battle. I forfeit. I leave. That's it. Done. I don't touch the squad arena again. My rank hasn't changed since squad arena stopped. This been, really could be a. This really could be a good sandbox experience. But the sad part is you only get five shots at it. Yeah. It would have been nice to see them reduce the um, the crystal cost to refresh um, because it's still 50. Uh, so I, I, it would have been nice to see them make it cheaper, maybe reduce that by 50%, drop it down to 25 so that people don't feel like they're having to break the bank in order to play around with various different teams because uh, people don't have to worry about hitting people during a payout hour anymore because there's there's nothing in it. There's just anybody complaining about not being able to get their squad arena currency is is just being facetious. I'm I'm very happy. I've saved up so much squad arena currency ever since I maxed that store. It really is a capital ship store now because of the shipability material. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> nothing. Zaz nothing says, don't on. be fooled. CG is planning to have the next big gear piece as Squad Arena rewards. Watch this space. Mm -hmm. That'd be I, 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 I think, I mean, I think. I mean, give it, give it, give it a few months. They might throw something extra in there. Um, if not throwing something extra in there, maybe increase the. Um, but the, the, they've put gear in there to help people, the the, the more intermediate players, uh, be able to do more with their currency that have got all of the characters. Um, but obviously, it's still quite expensive. The gear is still quite expensive in Squad Arena Store. So I think give it a few months and what they'll do is they'll double um, or triple the Squad Arena currency rewards and make it not, make it similar to the, um, the Galactic War because you get 1,400 of that currency. Um, I think that what they'll end up doing is something similar. So everybody in the top 100 gets 1,500. Uh, everybody from 100 to 500 gets 14, you know, something along those lines. So so people don't feel like they have to climb, but they'll still play around with Squad Arena like a sandbox mode. If, 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 if CG's intention is to never give us a true sandbox mode, they can make this close to a sandbox mode by reducing how much it costs to refresh from 50 crystals to 25 crystals and increase the squad arena currency it's not going to help you know the high end account those purple bits of gear but something you know something like 14 or 1500 it would really 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 help the um the lower tier players get more purple gear um to help with that gear 8 to gear 12 crunch on um a lot of the characters that they'll have in their rosters yeah. uh ray rock mentioned that they um that Rayrock uses the Squad Arena credit to purchase characters to get shards. Yeah, no, that's what I do. I, I don't because it's more cost-effective to buy the ships that are in the Guild Event store or the, uh, no, the, um, the Guild War store and also the Cantina shard, Cantina currency that you get. Mm -hmm buying that ship that's a better deal i'd rather use it for stuff for ships 
I want to I want to get back to having a reserve of 5000 in case they release two capital ships alongside each other like they did almost simultaneously with the malevolence and the negotiator. Mm-hmm. So, Cascade doesn't like that they didn't take away uh Fleet Arena at the same time as Squad Arena in the Crystals. I think Fleet Arena is more of an end game where the Squad Arena was because Fleet Arena you don't get access to what? 60 Level 60. Yeah, level 60. For Squad Arena, that was forced on you right away. Yeah, as soon as you cross that level 28 threshold, boom, Squad Arena. Yeah. So, Dickie Darkside, thank you for the subscription. Um, Yeah, they're not going to get rid of Fleet Arena because um, um, the, the, there would be a lot of unhappy people that have gone... Ham, for Executor. <laughs> uh, for Executor. Yeah, yeah, um, I would. The, the, I'd the, be uh, upset, but I wouldn't. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't go th- quitting the game over it. I'd just use it more in Grand Arena. Yeah. So. No, I'm. I'm. St- I mean, I. I don't have my executor yet. I mean, it's going to be the next one that I go for. I'll go for an executor before I go for a GL. Um, be s- sim- simply because I, I. You know, the way that GA, the the way that GAC is going to fall. Um. Uh, you, you're you're more likely to see a defeat if you do not have an executor than if you do have an executor. It's as simple as that. It's it's yeah. basic maths and strategy. So, um, yeah, go for an executor. I, I would. I'll, you should always go for the executor over a GL. That, I think that goes without saying. All right, let's go ahead. Let's take a break. Coming up, Thaddeus is going to tell you all where Marjade came from. Uh, in oh, case, yeah. in case you didn't know, other than a three thirty pack that Neil purchased. Sorry, what was that, Paul? What, uh, what did I get again? A three thirty pack. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes, I did. I got a three. What did I get? What, pack. what did I get in B one? B one is you can't compare a B one to Mara Jade. All right, we'll be back after these messages right here on the Escape Pod Cast. <laughs> Hotbot and Hot Utils is one of the most comprehensive tools for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. With integration into the super useful mod tool Grand Ivory, Hot Utils can help you tackle some of the most difficult aspects of the game. Not sure how to mod your roster for a certain game mode? Use one of the many filters that automatically assigns the right mods to the right character in accordance with your guild needs. Now with the digital features that can assist you and your guild officers in territory battles and territory wars, Hot Utils is an amazing value. And don't forget the useful tools for yourself in Grand Arena, like the in-depth and customizable compare feature. Got multiple accounts like Neil, but not the time to remod them all? With this one-stop utility, you can switch between your alts and never miss a mod upgrade or a mod switch before locking into GAC or territory wars. Starting at just $5 a month, you don't want to miss out on these great tools. Hot Utils is the new official remodding service for the Escape Pod. Cast. Visit HotUtils.com to learn more. That's H-O-T-U-T-I-L-S dot com. And go ahead and spice up your Galaxy of Heroes experience. Podawans, be sure to support the shows brought to you on the Escape Podcast Twitch and YouTube channel by becoming a Patreon. For as little as $2 a month, you can support us and get a little extra for yourself. With tiered rewards, including access to Shitty Bill's Arena tracking box, after show access, inclusion in the GA Center leaderboards, behind the scenes access, and much more. There is something for everyone on our Discord server. Head on over to Patreon, that is P A T R E O N dot com slash the escape pod and sign up today. Thank you for supporting and listening to the Escape Podcast. The Escape Pod, cast for kids. It's really cool. Hello there, Padawans, and welcome back to Storytime with Uncle Thad and the Escape Pod cast for kids. 
Today we're going to talk about the last character needed before we unlock Starkiller, and that is none other than Mara Jade. Now we need to make one thing clear. This is not Mara Jade Skywalker, Jedi, Force, Power, and relative bad A in, in the New Republic. Today we are talking about Mara Jade, Hand of the Emperor, and where in the canon her kit actually comes from. Mara Jade was a Force-sensitive human female born 17 years before the Battle of Yavin. Like many children with high midichlorian counts, Mara Jade was taken from her parents and raised in the Imperial Palace on Coruscant. Her cover was that of a palace dancer, but in reality, she was trained with the Imperial Royal Guard. Her training was rigorous. She was trained in covert affairs, espionage, infiltration, and by the age of 14 had become one of the Emperor's hands, a personal assassin for Palpatine. From then until after the Battle of Yavid, Mara carried out the Emperor's will across the galaxy, eliminating corrupt officials, provocateurs, and others who encouraged the wrath of the Emperor. Over the course of her service as Hand, Mara Jade grew to dislike and even distrust Darth Vader. She watched as his obsession with Luke Skywalker grew and deepened. Secretly, she wanted Vader to betray the Emperor so that he might be dispatched and she, Mara Jade, could take the role of Emperor's apprentice. Because of her duties as spy, Mara spent much of her time away from the Imperial Center and out of the presence of her master. But Mara Jade was unique in her role as the Hand of the Emperor. She and Palpatine shared a telepathic link which allowed her to hear his voice anywhere in the galaxy. This was useful because she spent much of her time working remotely. It was for this reason that she was not with Palpatine during the second attack on the Death Star. There is more to Mara Jade's past than I have time to go into. She is a well-developed character, and her story arc is one that all Star Wars fans should become familiar with. But with that, let's take a look at her kit and see just exactly how it fits in the overall lore that is Mara Jade, Hand of the Emperor. Let's take a look at her tags. She is a dark side, imperial, unaligned force using attacker. This is in keeping with the fact that Mara was never truly an apprentice to Palpatine. Just like Asajj Ventress was with Dooku, she never earned the title Darth, even though she was a number two to a number one. I love Mara's basic ability. If you look at her, she's just standing there, lightsaber ablaze, looking menacing. But does she use it? No, she shoots her opponent. Talk about misdirection. That's Spice School Stuff 101. Her first ability is actually a reference to a really cool moment from Mara's past. In a mission to eliminate the leader of Black Nebula, Mara says, Victims run off and hide. Prey runs off and hide. But I am not a victim. I am not Prey. I am the Emperor's hand. I am the ultimate predator. And it's time for Dukak and Black Nebula to die. So, there's that which is, I, I think, pretty freaking cool. Now, Mara's second special ability, you know, the one that does all the offense down and gives the shocker and stagger and, and provides just general mayhem to her opponent. This is a call to her effectiveness as an Imperial spy. Again, I mean, she blows a bunch of stuff up and then just disappears. Again, spy school stuff 101. Now, Mara Jade's unique ability is really one heck of a unique ability. She only has one, but she only needs one. It is this ability that truly highlights her role as Hand. Mara took orders from directly from Palpatine, but she wasn't incapable of operating on her own. In fact, she was very capable of being an independent agent unto herself. She is a force to be reckoned with, with or without the Emperor nearby. Well, that's all for me this week. Stay tuned for next week's story time with Uncle Thad on the Escape Pod Cast for Kids. Hello, friends. This is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy, and I approve this message. 
and am compensated for signups for this service. The world's largest audiobook library is at your fingertips, and the Escape Pod Castaways want you to try it for free. Head on over to escapepodcastaways.com and click the Going Nerdy Offer button to claim a free audiobook and two Audible Originals. Cancel any time, and it's absolutely free to sign up. Check out Audible and support the Escape Pod Castaways, all for free. See Audible website for details. Restrictions may apply. Hey there, listeners. Merchandise specialist Critty K here. Do you enjoy the Escape Pod and want to support the channel and get something a little extra for yourself as well? Head on over to tpublic.com slash user slash the Escape Podcast and grab a Team Neil, Team Paul, Critty Play, or many other fun Padawan designs on your choice of shirt, cup, sticker, mask, or even a magnet. And be sure to check out the Mrs. Anthony Shirts channel on the Escape Podcast Discord and get the latest info on the other designs I make as well. Sometimes there's even a sale going on, so it is smart to stop on by. Thank you for supporting the Escape Podcast. Receiving incoming transmission. And welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. This week's incoming transmissions, another fellow from the Tactical Advantage crew. Paul, introduce our guest for today. Well, this uh, this mountaineer from... I, I may, need to make sure I didn't call him a hokey. He would have killed me. Uh, is the is a uh, loving father uh, to two kids? Am I right? Two kids. Two kids uh, and, a, uh, and a wonderful wife. He is a the you were one of the founders, I believe, of Tactical Advantage. Yep. Um and you know, I, I was on their show about about a month ago. Great show to uh to watch and listen to. And once again, another of the Tactical Advantage people that is helping raise money for Toys for Tots. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Trevor Boy Gaming. Trevor, how are you? Doing good, how are you all doing? We're doing well. Uh, how how's your Mara Jade? Well, well, no, well, well sh- okay. Sure. Trevor, <laughs> Trevor, do you own a Relic Five Mara Jade Sky Mara Jade? I can if I want to. Well, oh, that must be me then. <laughs> <laughs> he will not shut up about. No, this. I will not shut up about. I'm never <laughs> shutting up about that character, like ever. You know, I've been yammering on for this character, so uh, you but, have. Uh, so, so are you are you going to simp on her then or not? Uh, she's worth it. Maybe. Do Ooh, you have Do you really have the other it. Star Killer prerequisites already at Relic Five or not? No, but you can. I've already did, I've already did <laughs> some testing with her, so she's already good at three stars. Uh, I faced people in Con- I, last last night's stream. I did people in Conquest. Uh, I was smacking relic around like it was candy. I one mean, one thing we didn't talk about, Neil, is what? the legacy tier. Of course, you don't already have a you don't have a uh, five star talon. Uh, the legacy tier was not a joke this time around for four omicrons. You needed gear seven and gear eight in order to pass that legacy tier, in my opinion. So that that was a little bit crazy, but story right now is not about me or the legacy (laughs) tier it is about mara no it's about trevor boy and his account let's get the people to under uh to know a little bit about trevor how long have you been playing my friend i've lost count i think five and a half years okay so so not immediately at launch but shortly after yeah somebody got me hooked on at work um so I'd play this game, and I said, "Okay." Uh, didn't know what I was doing. Uh, <laughs> that, that Neither did I for a, for a long time. What is uh, what? What's your 
You have more more than one account, or yeah, multiples. Okay, you have multiples. Your main account. Okay. Um. What uh, What's the GP and is it free to play or are you aquatic in nature? Depends on what my wife's watching. Um, <laughs> Does she say, understand uh, what aquatic means? <laughs> <laughs> um, a little under five mil. I think I'm at four point nine seven, something like that. Um, I do spend on it. Okay. Um, it has to be something that I can tell myself in the head it's worth it. Um, is it going to help me in the game? Like these certain packs. Like I like to buy the energy packs because I can see myself using them down the road and or immediately. Um, especially if you're farming characters that you need those energies for. Um, yeah, I do spend a little bit. I ain't gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, I myself, ahead. you know, I, I go after. Uh, listeners of the show know that I am a Pokemon collector. I like my stars on my characters. Not all of them are all geared up, but I certainly like my stars. You are more after the energy itself, though, you say? Um, when I buy, yes. Because, like, I have to see myself, like, is it going, basically what I say is, is it going to advance me in the game? Is it going to help me, like, like, malevolent ship? I farmed on, I spent on that. Um, it was a community challenge. I had to after I told them I would. Um, they got, they got, they, they had me. Um, so, th- but I, it helps me in the game before all the other ships came out that it helped me in my crystal income. Still does. I still get number one. Um, so th- even with the executors, you're so yes. you're 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 confident enough and you're well off enough that you can take down the seven star executors. No, I just go around them. You t- <laughs> <laughs> I just go around them. Um, but I mean, it just has to be something. Now, if it's a like, if it's Mar Jade, I, I mean, you know, I might spin a little bit, but. It's if it's a character I'm excited about, I will. Yeah, but if it's it's, not, it's like Hondo. Hondo comes out, I go crazy. Yeah, it's, it has to be something that it's just. Oh my gosh, I gotta have it. I'm not waiting. I gotta have that now. And how, like, go ahead. How would you describe your account? If if, so, if somebody looked at your account, how do you think they would describe it? But how would you describe it itself? Well, they call it a mini well. No, no, I mean, I mean, what, what, when they're looking at it, are you dark side heavy, light side heavy? Um, right. I used to be all dark side heavy, but I'm where I'm going for after Jedi Master Luke. It's getting a little light in there. Um, so I'm like 50 50 right now. I do like dark side better than I do like light side. Um, I'm a big Vader fan. Um, before the nerf. Um, but, <laughs> the but snap. yeah, we, we, yeah. we're now refer- referring to it as the snap. It's not. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, it's about 50 50, maybe a little bit dark side. I don't know. I'd have to go in there and look. But uh, yeah, it's probably 50 50. Now, what questions do you want to know about uh, about Trevor Boy here? How, how, how heavy into uh, GAC are you then? Um, very competitive. Um, yeah, I'm super competitive about how, it. How, ba- how badly are you jonesing for another GAC? Because I, I, I've been like, I, 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 I'm, I'm having withdrawal symptoms. It's been really, really bad for me. When did the withdrawal symptoms first kick in for you? Was it an hour or two, or was it a day or two after? You know, <laughs> when, when it that Tuesday passed and there was no GAC. It's like how. Well, I how- on, on a scale of um, happy to Dave Chappelle. <laughs> I was probably in the medium, like when Monday hit and there was no signups, like usual, mm-hmm. I knew something was up. Actually, we knew a couple of days before because everybody was hitting around. It wasn't in the calendar. So people were noticing that it wasn't going to come. 
And you know, it's got been kind of boring, to be honest with you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it has. I've been doing a little bit, you know, much fun you can do in conquest, but I, you know, man, it's about. I mean, it, it's been kind of boring. Not a lot of stuff to put out there. Um, it is. It is. This game is boring without GAC. It's it, <laughs> CG. You might not want to hear it, but this game <laughs> sucks without GAC. And it, it really and, does. And GAC in those weeks, it's only really three. 24-hour periods when there's seven 24-hour periods in a week. So even less than half the time is needed in a week for it to be interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I think they uh, they took too long of a break at this time. I mean, everybody's itching. Like, everybody in the community is like... Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, they're like, we gotta go. They're like, we're bloating everything up. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, you finally can. You know, there's no... GP divisions. Um, there's no, uh, you know, you, you're going to be able to move freely, Kyber, Rhodium, all that, depending on how you do. So you're finally not handcuffed. The only thing that really handcuffs you is territory wars right now. GP bloat is great for territory battles. GP bloat has no effect on Grand Arena going forward. Only your initial placement. So territory wars is the only thing that still looks at a GP in the as a factor in the matchmaking process. And what but it benefits you to bloat so you can get guaranteed a droid brain. Yeah, no, everybody nobody cares about territory wars, Paul. This is going to be the longest weekend in Swagger history because this is it. It's you know, this is it. You got this weekend, and <laughs> then and then that's it. So uh, what 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 are you fast tracking this weekend in order to be ready for lock in on Monday? What 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 is what is Trevor Boy Gaming's fast track this weekend? What are you thinking? I need to get this finished before the lock in on Monday. All right, since this break we've had, before I knew this was going to be a longer break than it was, I've been, I've been, I've been, I found some amazing mods. Like I've been having, a, I've been on a roll. The mod um, game. The mod game. Because I got so many six stop mods. They're not even on my characters. So that's what I'm doing this weekend on my main account. Because I'm just like, I got all these mods. I got to put them in here. I got to have this done. Because Wait, wait, the uh, they placed me. They placed me with lower people. They might like I, I, I don't know how they did, but you, you said, you said where, five point five point six. I think he said. Do you have did, that where did list? You get, where did you get seeded? Uh, a rhodium four. what? Four. A rhodium four. So here's the thing: you you could you I mean you if you have a blistering run. If you have a really, really good run, you go 12 and 0 in month one, you will get promoted to um to Kyber five for the beginning of uh, next season. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking because and I was looking back, I don't know if this counted or not, but somehow people didn't have mods on them because I was moving stuff around, mm -hmm. playing around with things. Um, so I don't know if that counted. They're like, Well, he's he's lower than he is. Now I can go above five mil easily. Yeah, no, the uh, the the GP lock for seeding occurred on the 8th. So yeah. the seeding occurred on the 8th. Um uh, so you you've been so everybody everybody on the 8th will have been placed automatically into a league and a division. Uh, and like you said you got a rhodium uh, a rhodium 4. Um there's a lot of time between the 8th and the 12th that you can do things to your roster um, I mean, this is this is mo re removing the fact that there are people in your division. If you click, and I, I I tell I would suggest everybody go and do this. Go to your league, click on your division, and you'll see a list of names of people that are in your division. These are the people that you're going to get matched against in week one. All right, and have a look at how many people 
that are in your division that you simply should not be getting matched up against. I found somebody in Kyber 4 with 1.6 mil GP. I'm not joking. How's I'm that? not joking. I have no idea how the hell that happened. I hope to God I get matched against them. <laughs> uh, because it's going to be a gizzit. I'm going to be like, sorry, dude, but you're going to lose. Just, you know... Um, but uh, yeah, no, to, to, to get back on track. Um, so you've been working on the uh, the uh, on your mod game, basically. Yeah, my is, game. That, is that primarily for um, offense to make your offensive teams faster? Or is it, you know, have you been working on making your defensive teams uh, a little bit faster so that you can put some weak source on defense and just strip banners? What What's your... Uh, uh, what's your strategy going to be moving forward, do you think? Well, you remember last season, I was on a roll. Um, I think I went last, what did I go, 6-0, and 9-0? Oh, and oh, we end. didn't get that many reports, so we, we don't know. <laughs> um, so I went, on, I went on a roll, but what happened was my defense held strong. So what I was thinking, I, I got around with a couple people, and I was like, I want my defense to be even better this time around. So – the certain teams I got one or two holds, I want three or four or five holds. I want my offense to be even better as well. So, like, most of the time I pick, I would pick gas down. Nobody could go through him at all because um, I had him modded really well, and they, they, just, they just thought they could go through and they couldn't. Um, so, I'm working on – I'm going to go – tell everything but i'm working on a couple of things i'm gonna put down that i've rebotted to the t that it's gonna hold okay well let, let's let's continue on the gac topic okay. on the tactical advantage server you uh you know we we talked about it with ringer uh mm -hmm. but you you actually said i want to kind of talk a little bit about, more about it now i was like yeah come on let, let's let's <laughs> have you on the show this week so explain what was uh explain what it is for the mm -hmm. people who are listening for the first time and uh, kind of explain a little bit more of what you do on the tactical advantage server when it comes to GAC and your GAC brackets. All right. So the thing was around in March. I, it was just me and ringer at the time before I brought trouble and elder on with us. I was like, I'm going to make a bracket because it was March madness. So now I, I was in, I, that was the flavor. And I was, <laughs> like, I was like, I'm going to make it. So I made it. Everybody, you know, it needed tweaked um, badly after the couple of seasons. Um, basically what it is, is then till now, then it was just like a bracket, like an NCAA bracket. Um, you know, you get matched up. I matched everybody up by GP, blah, blah, blah. You get points basically. If you win, you get 10 points. If like if you win your round, um, defensive holds, points, um, full clears, you get points. And if you like any and you if you lost, like like if you attack somebody and you lost, it was negative points. So we added it up on a Google sheet, and then the next person would advance and boom, boom, boom. And you go until we have a champion. Um so we don't have anything in game that will pull the data because I've been asking around that will pull the individual player data because it would be so much easier. But right now I have to have people post in Discord or I'll have to look off the website. So you need somebody to post reports for you. They, they, everybody that signs up will post their own data. They will post the reports. I pull it to make sure you know no cheating or anything. Nobody has, but I just I double check um, to see if and if it matches up. Or if they forget to post, I'll get in there. If SWGOH.G updates in time, I can go in there and pull it. But after the third round, they like to be – they don't update until the next GAC comes around. So that's where I had trouble. So I was like, yeah, you guys got to – you guys got to give me some data. Um, now, now, I talked to a couple people. They want to do a playoff, and I reworked it. Basically, <laughs> it's like a – American football, first nine matches, you go through normal, still got to post your data and stuff. But then the top eight advance to a playoff. We pair everybody up. Um, Are you going to be using skill ranking in this situation or still GP? 
Uh, actually, the skill we... ranking is essentially going to show wins and losses and, and the the skill size. Now, we're not doing anything. We're just doing whatever you finish in the top, the first nine matches. Like, so total points after the nine matches. Gotcha. So, so you're still first, within your within your point system. Yeah. So if you can, if you become first, you get first seed after the nine matches. Gotcha. You finish seventh. You seventh. Seventh. You finish eighth. You finish eighth. We put those. We put those eight people together. Um, first faces eighth. Two seven. You know how it goes. Um, and then we get a champion. All right. And uh, do you guys charge for any of this? What's what's the uh, what's the prize at the end of the uh, end of the season? Well, last season I gave out money uh, for myself, um, Elder One. Um, he, we are giving it to charity, so it was his choice. So that's what we're doing. All right, and, and that that that. How did you even know that we were going to in turn talk about? Because we're we're coming up at the coming up near the end because we have the finale of Hellion the Noob coming up. What? Um, you guys are doing a charity event actually yep. right now, if I'm correct. Yeah, I think Andy's on right now. Yep, so we'll be writing into Andy Beats at the end of the show. Uh, I think it's Andy. But, but t- tell people, you know, as Ringer did, what what are you guys raising money for and what's your goals? Um, Ringer came to me. He goes, dude, I want to do some kind of charity events. I'm like, okay. And then he goes, I want to do Toys for Tots. I'm like, all right, let's do it. And I have kids, my kid, and now and it's close. I've done this event before, and it's close, close to my heart. I, I think not all kids are privileged as mine, um, so they can't afford gifts for Christmas. So I thought it was a very good idea. Um, it's really his his thing. He he made a schedule. He got everybody up on board. Um, so basically, we're just raising money. We're at six fifty. We did raise a little bit this evening. Nice. Yes. Um, well, you got to get to that five thousand for me to eat crickets. I'm just saying. Uh we're, we're going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> I think realistic goal is going to be a thousand. I was talking to Ringer about uh, this this today, and I just think a thousand is going to be realistic. Um, we're doing a very great job uh, of what we've done. Um, it just. I think next year we'll do a little bit sooner so we have a more run at it. Um, where we did start it first December, right after Thanksgiving. Right. It took a couple times to get it prepared and then and get it. And lots, lots of places do a loading ready run, does Desert Bus for Hope. They they raised million. <laughs> so Yeah, it's a it's a good cause. Um, like I said, I'll be I'll be doing my I'm on in the morning because uh we go on to a Christmas parade right after. Um, nice. But uh, yeah, so we're going to. I'm gonna make a run at it. I'm gonna try to make a run at the thousand. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's a very good cause. Um, I mean, it, a- I, anything it, special with this uh, with this charity event that's coming up in this in the schedule? What do you mean? Are, are you doing car- uh, creators against humanity again for the uh, finale? Uh, I have to look. I that's. I that would be Ringer's time slot. Gotcha. Um, I look, I think I'm just gonna do. Uh, I think I'm just gonna do Clash of Clans in the morning. Um, to like that got a pretty good job last time, so we'll see how that goes. Gotcha, Neil. Any final any final yeah. questions for uh, Trevor Boy before we? Yeah, uh... I'm good to go, mate. All right, and uh, just just checking. Um. Who who pulled three hundred and thirty Mara Jade shards, Neil? Oh, that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> How do people find you, Trevor? Um, twitch.tv slash Trevor Boy Gaming. Same thing on YouTube, Trevor Boy Gaming. Um, and that's a boy find... with an I. Yes, I saw you put a Y. I um... I, I on the, on the main <laughs> thing, but in, in everything else is with an I. Yeah, if you I... notice right down there, right now. <laughs> you... Uh, you can find us on the Tackle Avengers Discord. That's about it. Um, that's it. Twitter, same thing. All right. Tactical Advantage Discord is in the show notes if you're listening to this on uh, replay or uh, in the description down below if you're watching on YouTube. Coming up, here we go. The finale 
Finito. No more. It is a past segment. It ceases to be of Helly and the Noob right after these, well, during these messages right here on the Escape Pod cast. Hotbot in Hot Utils is one of the most comprehensive tools for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. With integration into the super useful mod tool Grand Ivory, Hot Utils can help you tackle some of the most difficult aspects of the game. Not sure how to mod your roster for a certain game mode? Use one of the many filters that automatically assigns the right mods to the right character in accordance with your guild needs. Now with the digital features that can assist you and your guild officers in territory battles and territory wars, Hot Utils is an amazing value. And don't forget the useful tools for yourself in Grand Arena, like the in-depth and customizable compare feature. Got multiple accounts like Neil, but not the time to remod them all? With this one-stop utility, you can switch between your alts and never miss a mod upgrade or a mod switch before locking into GAC or Territory Wars. Starting at just $5 a month, you don't want to miss out on these great tools. Hot Utils is the new official remodding service for the Escape Pod. Cast. Visit HotUtils.com to learn more. That's H-O-T-U-T-I-L-S dot com. And go ahead and spice up your Galaxy of Heroes experience. Polo-ons, be sure to support the shows brought to you on the Escape Podcast Twitch and YouTube channel by becoming a Patreon. For as little as $2 a month, you can support us and get a little extra for yourself. With tiered rewards, including access to Shitty Bill's Arena tracking bot, after show access, inclusion in the GA Center leaderboards, behind the scenes access, and much more. There is something for everyone on our Discord server. Head on over to Patreon, that is P A T R E O N dot com slash the escape pod and sign up today. Thank you for supporting and listening to the Escape Podcast. And now time for something completely shameless. Almost no time has passed since we were last in the presence of our petulant protagonist. The sarcastic, salty Spartan cartoon Hellenics rides one of the many turbo lifts found inside the former Jedi Temple on Coruscant, accompanied by the novice neophyte newbie N00B. Alongside these two space vagabonds is the Turbolift's operator, a blue-collar working stiff non-human sentient who must surely be asking himself, what in space hell has he done to deserve such cruel and inhumane torture as to be in the mere presence of these two space clowns? We now join this trio as this elevator ride nears the end of its journey, upward through the heart of the former Jedi Temple building. Last stop, the headquarters of... TC-14. Are we there yet? Obviously not, Automaton. Don't harass the alien dude, newbie. I'd like us to reach our objective within the next few minutes, all right? Uh. He said, relax, droid. You'll be there soon. You weren't kidding, human. This droid is just a mechanical version of an overgrown child. Ah, uh, newbie's all right. When he's given a very narrow, super specific task to focus on. It's when he's left to his own devices that his logic processors start, uh, wandering. As you know, droids weren't built for thinking. Shoot, if they were, there'd be no need for the rest of us. Hey! Meatbag! I'm standing right here, you know. I can hear you. And that wasn't a very nice thing to say. Yeah, yeah, whatever, droid. By now you should know that I'm simply not that Nice. You sure you guys don't want to stop at any of these floors we're whizzing by before you get off at the top? There's a really nice footwear gallery on level 1242. The new god working that area, Lefty or Dicky or something, really cool guy. Now that's someone people would really enjoy hanging out with on a weekly basis. No time for distractions or detours, my extraterrestrial friend. I have a rat to confront. All right. Hello, thanks. You need to stop calling TC-14 a rat. It's rude, it's uncalled for, and it's not what any good person should do. Oh, newbie, 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 newbie. You are such a noob, bro. You don't have anywhere near the same XP as I do. Remember, I've been at this game since day one. You barely just started playing the game. Trust me when I tell you, I know my rats, and at the core of TC-14, there's nothing but a dirty, 
filthy, stinking rat. You have got to be the most infuriating person I've ever had to interact with, Linux. Uh, he doesn't seem all that bad, droid. As a matter of fact, your human friend here seems kind of tame, really. I don't know a single person who would describe Linux as tame, Mr. Extraterrestrial, sir. The droid here is just a bit, no, oh, how can I put this, inexperienced, my alien dude. He doesn't realize what's truly at stake here. He doesn't understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. He's naive and thinks, Everybody's always so nice and nobody does anything with any hidden ulterior motives. He hasn't seen what I've seen. He hasn't been where I've been. And he's never had to do what I've had to do. You know what, Linux? Announcer guy is right. You are a blowhard who thinks way too highly of himself. What do you think is going to happen when we reach TC-14 secret layer? I don't know. I guess I'm just going to burst in there and blow that protocol droid's head clean off its chassis with an excessive amount of force lightning. I guess. All right, fellas, you've arrived. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, Lennox. I think the extraterrestrial is waiting for you to tip him before he opens the door. Cheapskate. Ugh, fine. Jeez. <clears throat> Here's one shiny nickel, my extraterrestrial friend. Wow. Thanks. I'll be sure not to quit my day job. I guess I'll hurry up and open the old elevator door for you now. You cheapskate. Alright, 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 alright. <laughs> Linux, I can not believe you actually did that. Come on out, you rat. You cannot be serious. Hello, Linux. Are you suffering from some kind of malfunction? Mal 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 Wait, are humans even capable of having mal 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 malfunctions? Quiet, noob. Keep your eyes peeled. That rat's in here somewhere. All right. Meatbag. Why don't you just lower your hand, take a deep breath, let's turn around, and go home. Okay? What do you say, huh? There! Oh, my, 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 Are you trying to bring the entire galactic government down upon us? It's... A miracle! We haven't been apprehended already with the Sith lightning you've been firing off all day! Noob. Mouth shut. Eyes open. There! Dear R and Jesus, descend from your lofty heights in high roll heaven. And guide my bag. friend here to a less volatile state of being. He seems to have lost his marbles. Amen. Wait. There. <laughs> okay, you Greek. B okay. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. I'll come out. <laughs> All right, horsebox. You know GL having mother. F I'm here. Now what? Whoa! Uh -huh. Is that? Yes, noob. That's who's been behind this all along. That is. Mick. Uh, I mean, Michael. I, I mean, Mr. Mouse. I, I mean, how do you prefer I address you, sir? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a second. <laughs> My near non-existent inner circle of friends call me Mick. It's short for Mickey. You know. Mickey? Like Mickey? Rooney? Yeah, yeah, Mickey Rooney. N nobody else I know named Mickey. Nope, I can't think of a single one. Anyway, uh, but you, droid, you can call me Mr. Squealerson. <laughs> it is quite the honor, Mr. Squealerson. What? No, did you just say it's an honor to meet this, 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 this rat? What kind of treachery is this? <laughs> What's the problem this time, homeo box? Are you surprised? Don't get your pants in a bunch. Your droid's been licking my b er, I mean my boots since day one. Ha ha! Lemix! You're 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 embarrassing me! I'm embarrassing you? <laughs> You've always been an absolute waste of space, horror specs. A complete and utter embarrassment to everyone in the galaxy. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs>
Hellenix? I'm embarrassing you. <laughs> Apparently, you're also a really thick headed, c faced, brain dead idiot, horse box. <laughs> I said, Yes, you are. Meatbag. All right, that does it. Uh oh. <laughs> hey, watch it, Spartan. You almost tickled my butt with that blast. Oh, don't get me wrong, I do like that kind of action, but I typically prefer it done to me by <laughs> in third world countries. What happened, you Greek b? Did I strike a nerve? Wait. Are you worried about your friends? Like your droid here? Your droid! And all your friends are under my spell! They'll do whatever I tell them to do. They'll give me all their money, even if it means not paying for their own children's most basic needs. They're putty in my hands. They're slaves to my desires. And they ignore free-to-play losers like you! <laughs> I won't let, let you corrupt, corrupt any, any more newbies. newbies. It's too late for that, Dad. Watch this. Newbie? Kill him. He doesn't deserve to be in the same galaxy as you. He doesn't even have a single GL. What in the space hell does he know? Hellenix must die. Now. <laughs> no, 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 no. You no. will die. <laughs> some serious pain. Stop that. Let's talk about this. No. No more talking. Now, now you will pay. <laughs> Greedy fool. Only now, at the end, do you begin to understand. Your pathetic cries are no match for the power of the F2P. You are paying the price for your lack of compassion. Newbie, please, uh, please, newbie, help me! And now, you vile rodent, you will die. No! No! What in space hell do you think you're doing? Put me down, you nearsighted heap of malfunctioning circuitry. I said put me down. <laughs> do it, noob. Toss him over the railing. <laughs> noob, why are we heading to the edge of the catwalk? Wait. No. Don't do it. Don't you dare throw me down that bottomless pit! You set me down on the floor this instant, droid! You listen to me! You... You listen to me, you... You... You backstabbing, bootlicking, brainwashed, freeloading, parasitic, spineless, poorly put-together NPC! <laughs> Good job, bottom... Noob, I'll consider tossing you a free CWC shard for your troubles. <laughs> and who the f are you growling at, bottom? <laughs> you have 60 seconds to get out of my sight. If you do not vacate the immediate vicinity before then, you will be fired upon and eliminated. You now have 45 seconds to comply. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't get it. You want three CWC shards? <laughs> you now have 30 seconds to comply. <laughs> oh, well, f me. This NPC isn't f***ing around, is he? <laughs> 15 seconds. 
I'm getting the f out of here. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Well, if that wasn't a cliffhanger ending. <laughs> very interesting, very interesting ending, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, we will have to see what happens. Uh, well, if there is a heli, but uh, with the noob, possibly coming up in the season finale of the Escape Podcast. <laughs> so we don't have any Patreon's choice questions, I don't think. So... Oh no, we do. We do now have some uh have some Patreon's choice questions. Let's get to that in the bridge right here. Our uh, our questions currently come from Zaz. Who is hotter, Talon or Mara Jade? Mara Jade. Depends on uh which Talon we're talking about. Yeah. Well, if if we're talking about the Talon from the Legacy comics, then well, yeah, definitely her. Yeah. Who's who was your childhood celebrity crush? Um, uh, Gillian Anderson and Kathy Dennis. Drew Barrymore for me. Do you speak any other languages? Hi, so does Nick. Uh, I used to be able to speak very basic German, but it's been so long. I could probably, I couldn't. There's no way I could get by in German. I mean, I can still order beer and I can still order food and I can buy stuff and ask for directions, but that's pretty much the limitations of my German, unfortunately. And also, uh, yo habla muy poquito español. Okay. Who is the, <laughs> uh, who is the messiest person you know? Um. Hmm. Ooh. I would have to say me on a bad day. But I can also clean up. <laughs> um, probably Grover from Sesame Street. You would Grover, not not uh, not the Grouch, Oscar the Grouch. Sorry, Gro Oscar, not Gro. Not oh, okay. Grover. Oscar, Oscar. Sorry. All right. So you know Oscar the Grouch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Very dirty. Very very dirty. <laughs> What's your biggest pet peeve? Um. For me, for me, <laughs> for me, it's thumping stereos in a residential area. Um, I, I have some. I, I mean, I have lots of pet peeves. It, it depends how politically correct an answer people want, really. Mm. Hellenix just uh, uh, dropped three hundred bits, saying, oh. "Helly and the noob has been one helly of a ride, ladies and gentlemen." On behalf of, well, me, I guess, the Shameless Self-Promotion Studios would like to thank every fan of my poorly animated pseudo-cartoon, and I'd like to thank Paul and Neil for providing a venue for these silly little episodes to air. It's been a fun ride. Love you all. But not the end of uh, what you'll be doing for us, Helly. Um, but we, uh, you know, you have been... I I'm going to, to take a moment to thank Hellenix for being... One of the original moderators of the Escape Podcast. Um, we love you as well. Okay, so my biggest pet peeve yes. would be my my big okay, my biggest, my biggest, biggest, biggest pet peeve um would have to be hypocrisy. Like blatant, blatant hypocrisy. All right. That's my biggest pet peeve. What would you name a boat if you had one? I'm going to institute Bodie McBoatface is not a correct answer here, Neil. I'm sorry. I, to, to, be, put, to, to be honest, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of Cougar Town. And I loved the, the name that Bobby Cobb gave his boat. So I would, I would probably copy, I would call it Jealous Much. I, I would Jealous much. <laughs> I would have to um I'd have to go a little bit of a meme route. One of the one of the funniest boats that I ever saw was called the Unsinkable Two. 
<laughs> so I would probably call it the Unsinkable Five. Just uh. just to just to build upon that. Uh, what is the dumbest way you've been injured? I ran into a parked car playing catch with myself. Um, I stood on a football. So I, I was in the army. I was playing football. I stood on the football, put my weight on it. My ankle went out from underneath it. I picked up a grade A sprain and I was not able to use my foot leg. And I was on crutches for uh, 12 um I was on crutches for six months and in physiotherapy for 12 months. Standing oh, on a football. You didn't pop the football. No, no. The, 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 it, it, was, it was half flat. It wasn't uh, fully inflated. So it kind of squished under my foot and got away from me. And yeah, it, it was, it's, it's the worst injury that I've ever had. Uh, do you sing in the shower? And if so, what is your song of choice? I I don't sing in the shower. Uh, I I I <laughs> I'm not someone. I do not spend. I'm not like people that spend hours and hours and hours in the shower. I I I have a. Um, I when I have a shower, I do what's called the ship's routine. Um, uh, it's just an old habit from the army. Is you get in the shower, you turn the water on, you get yourself wet, then you get completely lathered up, and then you turn the shower back on, rinse off, and get out. That's just. It, it's just a, a because you you don't when you're wet, when you're on a camp and there's very very limited hot water and hundreds of people have to go through the shower if you do not follow the ship's routine and the last 100 people don't have hot water they tend to get annoyed with the people in front of them so uh, yeah <laughs> so even even now as a civilian i still use the ship's routine i get in get wet turn the shower off, get absolutely lathered up, and then I rinse it all off. So I don't have time to sing. So I used to, but nowadays it's whatever song I recently listened to because it's been stuck in my head as an earwig. So. All right. Uh, that was That's it for Zaz. Uh, Big Country Mags wants to know, now that you've pulled a 330... Is it time for you to retire? You've reached the peak of free to play. Oh, I mean, it, it, pulling a three thirty when you're free to play is definitely, you know, no, it it won't it won't be the end because the the new season of GAC is about to start, and I, I need to see I need to see how good I am against. Yeah, I'm no, it's not the end. It's just the beginning, BCM. It's just the beginning. Orange Jesus clearly loves me. More than everybody else that's free to play out there, or he would not have blessed me with a 330. Come on, let's be honest now. How many free to plays do you know have done what I've done? Um, because there's the, 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 I don't know that free, free to play people do not, as a ten, you know, as a tendency, uh, hoard crystals and then spend them on those packs because. We all know it's just going to be Swevens. It's it's just going to be Swevens unless you want it really bad and you make major sacrifices to the RNG gods. The RNG gods and RNGs clearly love me more than all other free to play players. So as I'm thinking, it's just the beginning. As far as I'm concerned, it literally is just the beginning. All right, Dicky Darkside asks, "Did you see the Star Wars Eclipse trailer? What are your thoughts?" Not seen it. No idea. Not seen it. So it is a. It's based in the High Republic era. But That's probably why I haven't watched it then, because as soon as I see High Republic, I switch off. But it doesn't. Is it bla set in it the doesn't High Republic blatantly or the say old Rep is no. it set in the High Republic, or is it? Does it say it's set in the Old Republic? It's. It doesn't say it's set anywhere. We just were told that it's in the High Republic era. But well, that, that, no, that that. It's either set in the High Republic or it's set in the Old Republic. It's set in the High Republic, according to the developers. Right, but and that's why I switched off it. But Neil, mm -hmm. it looked like the Yuuzhan Vong will be making their appearance in High Republic era. Is that enough to get you? No. 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 That, okay. that makes me not. That makes me not want to play it. That that makes that makes me think 
that the people that have come up with this game can't come up with an original concept from the Old Republic, and they're just ripping off the extended universe. So, yeah, no, that, that doesn't impress me at all. Not one little bit. It pisses me off, in fact. To me? Like, yay, yay, <laughs> we're going to come up with this great game. Who are the bad guys going to be? I don't know. Well, let's have any of you. Re- oh, well, I read this book, this series. It was great. The bad guys in it were awesome. Incredible book series. Well, we clearly don't have anybody that creative on our team. Let's just rip that off. So if it is the Yuzan Vong and that's what's been ripped off and they're taking it from an extended Yuna future era and ripping it off and taking it back to an era where they clearly can't come up with the creative imagination to think of their own bad guys then yeah, I don't care. I'm not interested. Okay. Well, they they looked like it, you know, we we don't oh, know anything. Hey, it could I I I'm 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 not denying, you know, it'll look I I you know, if games are given the time, then sure they're going to look great. I I imagine that the game will probably look awesome. I thought I have, it was actors. It was all CGI. Yeah, it's, hey, hey, then that's great that it, you know, something something like that can look really really good that doesn't mean that the story is going to be any less shit so uh, yeah no done i personally i i don't think that until i see actual gameplay i'm not going to get my hopes up because yeah. we've had things that look amazing anthem yeah but they did not come through yeah, look at this awesome trailer at E3. This is what we're going to give you. The game comes out. Nothing from the trailer is in the game. And the game's broken. Thanks a lot. And then so, there yeah. was, and, and don't forget they did the same thing with uh, uh, New World or something. Not New World. Lost Planet. What, whatever that was that ended up. It's now free if you're... Uh, Game Pass subscriber and all that. So yeah, I I I I have I I take. There's nothing. A, a trailer, a game trailer means nothing. Absolutely nothing to me. You, so it's you're like your friend in the movie trailers. You, yeah, he refuses yeah, to I, watch I, movies. Like my bet, my like my best mate who flat out refuses to watch trailers because we both watched the trailer for the remake of The Day the Earth Stood Still. The trailer looked awesome. We both went to watch the movie and the movie sucked ass. It sucked. All and right. It's got Keanu Reeves in, and he's a lovely bloke. So Just... we are now. Um, we're now about to close up, Neil. Other than the fact that yes, I know you pulled a three thirty. I've um, got a relic, Mara, <laughs> and you do not have one. I've got. A I got Mara. a five star Mara Jade. Got I got my. Mara. I got my nom nom nomicron. So I'm fine. Have one. You do not have one. I got a Mara. You okay. Do not have one. All right. That's enough, deal. What do you got coming up? Um, I don't know, really. To be perfectly the honest, the return with you. of GAC. No, GAC doesn't come back until after the weekend. Yes. I'm not Until the next it. time I, that we're I, live, I, you're going to be I'll, playing GAC. Mm, yeah, yeah, I will be playing GAC. No, this, I thought you were talking about this weekend. I've got nothing. Pla- I, I do need to get some last minute unpacking and bits and pieces done this weekend. The studio is pretty much set, though. The internet is back and rocking. So I will be doing some. I'll probably be doing some testing this weekend. I really, really want to open up this rig this new this gaming rig that i've got and i want to see what it's capable of so um um i'm gonna have a uh, play with that. um get i thought i things. muted the muted that i was going to the next one question for neil what number comes between 329 and 331 mara jade comes between those two <laughs> numbers that's what happens uh, yeah no so the, the, i'll do so I'll do, I'll do some i'll do some casual streaming this weekend just to Iron out, iron out the kinks. Get the get get the streaming cobwebs off. Um, really, really, really um, put the uh, uh, the 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 new machine through its paces. Test some camera angles. Check out some microphones. Do some streaming, and then yeah, get get ready to rock and roll for Monday lock in. You know, it's oh yeah, looking forward to it. It's gonna be awesome. Can't wait. 
<laughs> All right. So it looks like Mr. Bojangles is the one who's currently in the uh, in the group that's playing um, with a tactical advantage. So we're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna read Mr. Bojangles here in just a moment. But Neil, thank you very much. Next week, the guest is your uh, your call. You make the call okay. on that one. I will find I will find someone worthy. But um, we're excited to say that uh, just like last year, we will be talking to Santa Claus mm -hmm. for our Christmas special. And then we're also going to look, we're going to try to sit down with Taliana for the year-end special, which very well may also be our season finale. You guys will have to stick around for that. hope you guys can uh, tune in for that or catch it on replay. Unfortunately, Neil, I don't uh, I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but we have lost the first test against Heinze's crew. Yeah, yeah, I I know. I'm I'm I will go out and get the Fosters this week. Oh god, that's going to be horrible. Oh, you have to do something for each test? Yeah, I have to drink a warm Oh, it's going to be it's just making my skin crawl thinking about it. I have to drink warm Fosters. It, well, I just hope that made, England just, comes back because I oh, don't feel better. like dressing up like like an Ohio State cheerleader. Did they did they did, did they win by an innings or did we at least put them in for a second innings? Oh uh, no, they they got in for a second innings. Oh, thank God for that. But at all they, they needed was twenty. By, yeah, I, I I said no, I said that to Heinze. I went. I hope we put you in for at least a second innings, but it'll be something stupid like 41 to win. So I was not. Oh, it was it. only 14 to win by the time they needed 40, to go in. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So um, yeah. So I, I need to go find somewhere that firstly sells Fosters and B um, not put it in the front. I'm so, oh, it's so not looking forward to that. <laughs> I really am not looking forward to that. All right. I'm not. It's just making me, it's making my stomach turn just thinking about having to drink warm Fosters. Ugh. There is okay. no right temperature to drink Fosters at anyway. All it's right. tolerable cold. It's tolerable cold. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna I'm gonna crack I'm gonna crack it open. I'm gonna pour it into a glass and I'm going to neck it in one go. It's, the, uh, it's, it's like ripping up a plaster. You just gotta drink it as fast as possible so that it misses the taste buds. So that's what I'll be doing. <laughs> All right. And uh coming up this weekend, we finished Lego City Undercover, Neil. Oh, We're nice on to the Lego movie video game. Coming up after that is Lego Hobbit. We should have a lot of fun um, on Vault 37 Studios if you guys want to give that a follow on Twitch. But right now, we're about to raid Mr. Bojangles, and we're going to go ahead and close out this episode. We'll see you guys next week. We'll see the Patreons in the after show. And we'll see Neil with GAC coming up next week as well. Be nice to each other, damn it. Neil? Push the button. Don't mind if I do. What's going on? Where the hell are we? Paris? Thank you for pressing the self-destruct button. Attention! This is Colonel Sanders in forward command. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! All personnel proceed to escape pods! Close down the circuit! Evacuate the scene! Self-destruct mechanism has been activated! Abandon ship! Where is it? Where is it? It's gonna be here! Out of order! Even in the future, nothing works! This ship will self-destruct in exactly 10 seconds. <laughs> Counting down. Just kidding. Three, two, one. Have a nice day. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, friends. This is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy, the escape pod cast, was filmed in front of a live studio audience full of tweaked out. Murder bears. Sit, Boo Boo, sit. Good dog. Oh.